what happened after that. But let me tell you what happened after that. I, I won't get about what happened when they had the ark. King David said, we need the ark back. So he goes and says, we're going to go get the ark. Then he tells everybody, this is, this is amazing if you read it. Again, 2 Samuel 6. He tells everybody, I'm bringing the ark back. We've got it. The Philistines are ready. Just give it up. They've been going through boils and all kinds of nasty stuff over there because they got the ark. That's another story, another sermon. And as it's coming back, the whole nation is getting ready for God to come down to save them. You want to know what they did? The Bible says in 2 Samuel 6 that everybody who had an instrument, Joseph, you're not on the worship team, but you have a guitar, right? You would have been on the street with your guitar. Everybody who had an instrument was on the street on that parade where God was going to come through because they were going to play unto the Lord. Not for others to hear, but for him to hear. That's something for somebody right now. They were going to play their instrument, whatever it was. I mean, I don't care what instrument it was. If they had an instrument, they were told, get to the street where it's going to be and play on to the Lord. Those who didn't have an instrument, they danced. Others sang. Others did. Whatever it was, it was to rejoice that God was amongst them again. Now imagine, whole nation is on the streets. And something happens. They're waiting the anticipation of the presence to come down the street. Something happens. It's found in 2 Samuel 6, 6 and 7. Roger, if you'll put that up for me. What happens is the ox cart, one of the ox stumble, and it causes the cart to move. And there's this guy. He's a good guy. Somebody say good guy. He's a good guy. But read what happens. Verse 6, it says, and when they came to, forgive me on the name, Nathan's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it because the oxen had shook in it. It shook it, okay? In other words, it might fall. He's trying to protect it, okay? You get that? Put the next verse up, Raj. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. He's a good guy, remember? He's trying to keep the ark from falling. Remember, the ark's covered in gold, but it's made of Acadia wood and stuff, so it probably would have broken. And the things inside of it, but he goes and he grabs a hold of it to keep it from falling. But it says that the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. He's a good guy. He's trying to keep the throne, the, 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 the seat of God from falling and getting damaged. He grabs hold of it, and God gets angry. Wow. You want to know why God killed him? Because he wasn't a priest. That's why. A lot of people say, I don't get it. Why is God so mean? Why is God... He killed him because he wasn't a priest. Because only priests can carry the presence of God. Only priests. What, that, what does that tell you? That God won't be manhandled by anybody. Say, wow, he's a good guy. Yeah, he was a good guy. He was just trying to help. Yeah, he was just trying to help. But he was not qualified to touch the throne of God. See, some of us don't understand holiness. We don't understand what it is to, to we, we are grace, 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 but we, don't for, we forget about the holiness. That man lost his life. I didn't, he didn't go to hell. He probably went to Abraham's bosom, and then when Jesus went and preached, he got his way out. He's a good guy. He was trying to help. He was there. He was trusted by David to be by the ark. Think about it. But he was struck down, and the Bible says that God was angry with him. And he killed him. Why? Because he didn't qualify to touch God, to carry God. But church, I take you back to 2 Peter. 
You're a royal priesthood. God has qualified you because of your confession with your mouth and belief in your heart to carry the presence of him. Some of you shy away from God because you're afraid of him. You're afraid of him because you remember what you did last night. You remember what you did last week. But God already knew you were going to do that when he accepted you into his kingdom. You simply have to repent. And when you repent, then you simply have to believe that God is just and faithful to forgive your sins. Why? Because that's what he said. So, y'all ready to get into some awesomeness? Here is why. All that was to tell you that you're qualified, okay? Here is why we're continuing in the present. Here is why we're going to keep pushing and we're going to go deeper and we're going to go harder and we're going to go until we get there, okay? This is why. David gets spooked about moving the ark after that, right? He hasn't figured it out yet. He just knows the guy tried to, he touched the ark because he tried to keep it going off. He gets spooked. He says, you know what? We're leaving it right here at this guy's house because uh, forget the party. Everybody who's ready, sorry, guys. Church is canceled, okay? Because he's saying we're leaving it right here. Somebody just touched and somebody just died. That's pretty serious, okay? So he's sitting there going, you know, that's, that's pretty serious. We're going to leave it right here. And, you know, it makes sense, right? I mean, somebody just died. You don't want to continue with the party, right? You want to see what did we do wrong. David goes, by the way, Scripture says he goes and he finds out, well, it's because he wasn't a priest. He shouldn't have touched it, okay? So he finds out. But let me read 2 Samuel 6, 10 and 11. This is the reason why Living Word Church is pushing for what it's pushing for. It says, so David would not remove the ark of the Lord onto the city of David. He says, the ark just killed somebody, right? But David carried it aside into the house of Obededom, the Jittite, okay? Forgive me on the words, the names, okay? You try to say it, okay? Verse 11, it says, And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obededom, the Jittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obededom and all his household. What was in his house for three months? What does the ark represent? The presence. Okay. Three months. He and his entire household. This is all his household were what? Blessed. Say blessed. How many of you want to be blessed? Okay. So um, when father's presence moves in and stays in just three months, the blessings of the, for the head of the house and all that are within the house come. So when I'm pushing for the presence here and saying, come on, let's sing, let's do more, I'm not just looking for my blessing. Whose blessing is also coming with that? Yours. When I come up here and I push you, and, I, and you're like, man, we've been doing this for an hour, man. You know, you in the back working with the computers or whatever, and we've been, I've been standing for an hour, and there he goes. He's up there pushing us to sing, and wait a minute, there he goes telling me to open my mouth. I was singing 30 so minutes ago. He keeps pushing me, he keeps pushing me. I want you to understand, yeah, I am going to be blessed when God shows up in a physical way, but so are you. And it's my job to push you, it's my job to lead you, it's my job to tell you. That you can't be blessed in the full measure of what God wants to bless you in. Until he shows up physically. You know, I, I, there's people that go to other churches and, you know, God bless them. They're happy with a little Holy Ghost chill. That's the truth. They're happy with a little chill down their back. Oh, I was blessed today. Really? Did you sing? Or were you sung to? Because my Bible says I'm supposed to sing to him, not be sung to. Did you worship or did you watch somebody else worship? Because my Bible says I'm supposed to worship him. 
not watch somebody else worship. Are you hearing me today, church? We've got to go deeper. We've got to press. I'm not satisfied until a pillar of fire or a pillar of smoke show up at Living Word Church. Why? Because it's in the Old Testament. Why can't it be in the New Testament? How many of you want to be blessed? Do you know what blessed is? Some of you are like, well, I don't know, but it sounds good. Do you know what blessed is? Blessed is everything you put your hands to prospers. That's what blessed is. Blessed is your health, your wealth, your family, your kids not rebelling. That's blessed. It really is. Blessed is though you have enemies that come against you. Their ways never prosper against you. That's blessed. See, sometimes we talk about getting blessed by paying your tithes, and a lot of us don't understand that being blessed by paying your tithes doesn't always mean you're going to get more money. It may mean that your tires last another year. It means that your car don't break down. Because that saves us money in the long run, don't it? Blessed in true, true fashion, are you ready? Is something beyond what's normal or natural. In other words, your tires are rated for 40,000 miles and you got 80. You don't know how you paid your tires and how you're going to pay your, your bills, but somehow they all got paid. You don't know where you found that $200. You found $200, you don't know where it came from. You didn't see that frozen steak in your freezer the night before. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I felt the anointing on that one. If everybody in this church... Let's say, let's say the presence of God fell and the Shekinah glory is in the church. Shekinah glory all over the church. We see him. We're worshiping. We're praising him. We're being blessed. And Testimony Thursday comes around. Oh, the testimonies we would share. Oh, the audience we would have to share those testimonies. You would be testifying in front of your peers, but more importantly, in front of your God to his goodness. Every testimony would be so powerful. Every testimony would, would cause us to be at the edge of our seat as we watch the pulsating glory of God react to what he's doing or what's being said. See, I don't know about you, but I think church by itself can be boring. It's a, wait, 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 wait. You're the senior pastor. What in the world are you saying? I'm telling you that church without God is boring. Okay? And what we have, thank you, Jesus, but I'm not satisfied. Because there's so much more. How many of you got problems right now? Okay. How many of you are blessed right now? Why are you blessed? You know it's going to be taken care of. How do you know it's going to be taken care of? You have faith. What, what builds faith? The past trial. Right? In other words, God took care of it before. He's going to take care of it again. You know, some of you are worried about the same thing that you were worried about two years ago. Three years ago. He, got, he brought you through it, but you're worried again. Is that faith? It's not, is it? I am really having a hard time. God's wanting to release something here. I got to ask you a question. I'm being very real with you right now. Knowing that the Shekinah glory is possible. Okay. Knowing that you've been qualified to carry that glory. Okay, meaning he shows up to church just like everybody else shows up to church. He shows up to church. And you actually carry a piece of him with you home. Okay, knowing that. How in the world can we not desire that? 
except that we like our lives the way they are instead of the way they should be. How in the world can we not desire more of God except we like the bars? We like our sin. How in the world can we not desire the presence, the peace, the joy, the substance of God in our lives, in our homes, in our families, except maybe we don't value it as much as we value other things. Success is not about the land you own. It's not about the building you meet in. It's not about what car you have in the parking lot. Success is how much a father you have in you and in this service. Because with the habitation of Father's presence comes the fullness of his blessings. How many of you want fullness? Really, you really want fullness. You know, it's one of those things that, you, how do I say this? I tell people all the time, I, what I'm afraid of with God is to get there one day and he said, you did this much, and I had this much for you to do. That, that, that just, I tremble when I think about that. Some people don't even think twice about it. You're here to live your life, and when you get there, praise God, at least you're not in hell. I don't look at it that way at all. I know I'm not going to hell. That's not even part of my, uh, uh, the way I think, okay? I know I'm not, because Jesus finished it on the cross, and I accepted that finished work. So that's not even a part of my, my thought process now. Now my thought process is, what will I say? You say, well, you know what? No, no, God loves you. God is love. Yes, he is. But if you read the, the book of Revelation, I know just one book, and you look at the seven churches, he was love, 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 but. Isn't that what it was? Isn't that what happened? You did this right, you're doing this right, you're doing this right, you're doing this right. But I have this offense against you. So don't talk to me about God's ever enduring love all the time because I know he loves me. That's why I'm getting into heaven. I'm talking to you about the responsibility you have to live this life for him. Because I, I just saw A.W. Tozer said, he says, Christians, a whole, uh, a whole uh, generation of Christians have been raised to think that they can accept Christ but still live in the world. That's not what it is. You say, my Lord, my Savior. Okay? So he saves me from the pit of hell, but now he comes, becomes my Lord. What does it mean to be lorded over? Do you get to make decisions when he's your Lord? Well, yeah, I mean, technically, uh, you know, we get the choice of whether we want to follow him or not. What are you talking about? You're right. You got a choice whether you're going to follow him or not. You got, you, got, you got that right. I can't argue with you. In fact, most Christians like to uh, say they're going to follow him, but they don't follow him. How can we call him our Lord and Savior, but only have the Savior part and forget the Lord part? Church, I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to help you by telling you the truth. Your life no longer belongs to you. Period. He bought it. He bought, you know what, if, if, if you think that you can do that, then give me the keys to your car, because I don't care if you bought it, I'm going to drive it. You bought it, right? It's your car. Okay. And you're right, you know, you have the decision whether you want to drive that car or give it away or do whatever. You're right, you have that decision. But ultimately, it's your car. He bought you. He paid for you. What did he pay with? His blood, his life. You don't belong to yourself anymore, church. None whatsoever, not a little bit. When you wake up in the morning, it should be all about Jesus. When you go to sleep, it should be all about Jesus. Because if not, you're failing. 
See, that's where my mindset is. I don't want to fail the one who did not fail me. Because I know what I was before I came to him. I know where I was going if I never came to him. And because of that, my mindset has changed. And it's not just about, oh, I'm, I've got to go be successful and I'm, I'm going to go do this and, and people are going to, you know, they're going to remember me. That's not what it's about. If my God remembers me, I've done everything right. Man doesn't need to remember me. God needs to remember me. Church, I'm trying to help you right now because you need to understand it's time to stop the excuses. It's time to stop whatever's holding you back from being all out for Jesus. It's time. Because we can't go deeper until you do it. We can't. You can't be fully blessed. You know, Scripture says blessed going in and blessed going out. You can't have that unless he's in the house. You see, when he's in the house, you're blessed going in and blessed going out. When he's first in everything, then you're blessed. But when you put other things before him, even things that are good things, they ain't a God thing. Not if it comes before him. You know, I'm not just talking houses and cars. I'm talking about health. I'm talking about prosperity. See, you, you don't get, you got to read the scriptures. It says a thousand will fall on one side, ten thousand on the other, but nothing shall by any means harm me. We got a flu epidemic right now. Why can't we have the faith to say nobody in here is going to get the flu? Well, wait a minute. Wait, well, we live in the real world here. Is it the real world? It says you're in it, but not of it. That's scripture too. You're in it, but not of it. What does that mean? You're not held to the same rules. You're not held to the same things. A thousand fall on this side, 10,000 on the other. That's 11,000 deaths all around you, but nothing by any means shall harm you. Are you getting this, church? We have to come out. Come out from the world. We have to, it's time to stop blending in. They walk around powerless and then we walk around the same way. I mean, can I be very honest with you? Somebody sneezes, the world will say, God bless you. What should we be doing? Laying hands, let me bless you. Let me pray for that sickness right now that it does not multiply, that it does not increase, but that God would kill it at its root immediately. You know, I've got a good friend, a uh, uh, pastor in, in uh, Mississippi. And you know what he's taught his church? He's taught his church that if a person has a cold, they pray for it with the same determination as a person that has cancer. You want to know why? Because a cold can turn to death. Turns into pneumonia. Turns into death. So they pray for a cold, a common cold, with the same intensity that they would pray against the spirit of cancer. Because I don't know if you understand this, but God didn't give you no cold. So if God didn't give it to you, who gave it to you? God didn't give you no diabetes. God didn't give you no high blood pressure. So who gave it to you then? The enemy. Okay? So who will we believe in? Let me put it this way. Here we go. I'm taking a drink so you know it's going to be. Doctor says, I have high blood pressure. The silent killer. Says it's going to ruin my kidneys. It's going to eventually there will be a blockage. All these things are going to happen. I've got to take 15,000 pills. Okay. Doctor says this. There's another person who's had it for years. They got better by taking the pills, so I'm going to take the pills. And then you got this over here. I'm going to do that. And 
all these things that people are around because you're being influenced by everything around you. Now, how do I flip that over? I've got a thousand people that just got killed over here. I've got 10,000 people that just fell over here. I'm quivering in my boots thinking the next arrow is going to hit me. Or I've got a thousand people who just died over here. I've got, you know, 10,000 over here, but I'm standing firm saying, God said nothing shall by any means harm me. See, it is a choice. It is a choice. Now, I'm not telling you not to go to a doctor. What I am telling you is that the doctor makes an educated guess. The word is not an educated guess. It's called truth. And when we start to stand on the truth, then I'm not sitting here quivering, thinking, well, the last guy I know had high blood pressure. He did this. And the last guy I know, he, the, you know, he, the, the medicine didn't work for him over here. And, uh, and then I'm sitting here walking in this, in this fear. Instead of saying, you know what, uh, the doctor says I got to get on this. I'm going to go ahead and take it. But I tell you what, I'm not going to stay on it because I know my God's going to heal me. And what happens is we walk out of it and we become a walking, talking miracle to the doctor. That's the way it works, church. We need to become a people that are no longer satisfied with a visitation from God, but only satisfied with habitation. In other words, he moves in. You ever like those services? I don't know about you. I do. You ever like those services where you walk in and you can feel God already when you walk in? Even before the worship? Like, like he's already here and he's waiting for everybody to get here? He's like, come on, guys, get in here. We have a good time today. You ever like that? You know what I like? I like when I'm sitting there and I'm in the study, and, and, and uh, I was talking to Jeremiah a little bit about it earlier. And so the last minute, I'm rearranging notes and whatever, and then finally putting it on the, on the iPad. And I'm sitting there, and then sometimes God says, you're going to have a good time today. I love it when he does that. It just changes. It. It's a whole lot better than when I'm fighting with my wife on a wet church. No, we didn't fight today. I'm just saying. <laughs> How many of you have had fights before coming to church? Come on, be honest. Just some of you honest. All right, there you go. Church ain't quite the same, is it? It's not. Now, how many are all like, I love you, baby, on the way over to church, and church is a little bit better, right? That's just the way it is. Yes. So the question I have for you today, church, is do you want more, and do you want to do it his way, because that's the only way it's going to happen, or do you want to stay where we're at? It's, it's totally up to you. Because I'm going to be honest with you, you can't do what you did last year and expect to increase. Did you hear what I said? You can't do the same thing you did last year and expect increase. I don't care if last year was prosperous or not. You can't do the same thing. You have to push. The, the kingdom of God is ever increasing, ever expanding. Okay? Ever increasing, ever expanding. How do you keep up if you stand still? Church, I, I, I'm hoping you're getting this today because, you know, a lot of you said, yeah, I want more. But you have to understand to, to get more, there's sacrifice that has to be more. That's how you get more. It's not by doing the same thing. It, 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 it may be that you got to get a little closer to the altar. It may be that you got to get a little closer to the ground. It may be you need to turn around in your seat. You say, I don't go up to the altar. Fine, turn around in your seat and plant your face in that seat. I don't know. I don't, I don't know because everybody worships differently. I understand that. Everybody plays different instruments. People sing differently. So I'm not going to sit here and say everybody's got to do this and everybody's got to do that. Everybody worships dis differently. I understand that. But I know this. If you try to do it the same way you've done it, you're not going any deeper. You're not. This church does not try to follow other bigger churches that are successful in the world because it's not where God has us. Okay? Those churches, most of them, not all of them, but many of them, most of them, don't make time for God in their service. They don't. They have a time. You, you know, I don't care if God's starting to move, they cut it because they got announcements to make. Okay? And they've got, a, they got the offering and they've got this and they just don't do it. We're not doing it like that. Okay, why? Because I want to be a New Testament church, not an American church. All right. And believe it or not, I don't know if you know this, but even though you hear about all the big churches, they're the exception, not the rule. 
Most churches are small. Okay? This church, this house, if you want to be a part of the vision, is about the physical manifestation of our Father God in the midst of the service every Sunday, every Thursday, every Friday night. That's what this church is about. That's where we're going. Okay? We are about the physical manifestation of of God. I'm not just talking signs, miracles, and wonders. I'm not just talking healing. I'm not talking just warm, fuzzy feelings. I'm not even talking gold dust and diamonds and all that great stuff. That's all great. That's all, the, the, that's all extra. I'm talking about Father God coming and showing up for service in a physical way that is undeniable. That's what this church is about. So you have to make a choice. Do you want to be a part of it? Or do you want the easy way? Because it's not easy where we're going. Would you stand to your feet? See, I want God not to be a visitor, but I want him to be a co-dweller. I want him to dwell in my life. I want him to dwell in my home. I want him to dwell in my church. I want him to dwell in my finances. I want him to dwell in my health. I want him to dwell in everything. I want to be permeated with his presence. I mean, through and through, there is God in everything I do. You know, uh, uh, back in the day, oh, I ain't going there. Okay, never mind. I'm not going there. I want him to be in my waking thoughts. I love it when I wake up with songs in my spirit. Man, I wake up and I got a song in my spirit. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be a good day. I wake up and I think about all the things I got to do. I say, boy, it's going to be a busy day. I wake up and I think about all my problems and I have no unction to get out of bed. What do you wake up with, church? What's on your mind when you wake up? You know what I like? I like when I go to bed and he's on my mind. Because if I go to bed thinking about all the things I got to do the next day, I'm going to dream about them all night and I'm not going to get restful sleep. If I go to bed thinking about the argument I had with my wife, I'm going to go to bed wondering if she's going to kill me in the middle of the night. <laughs> if, I, if I go to bed thinking about anything else but God, it takes my night away from me. Does that make sense? So when I go to bed thinking about my God, what do I dream about? What do I think about? What do I experience at night? My God. What if the words say that David did? He says to meditate on him day and night. What happens when you meditate on God day and night? God shows up. How many of you want God to show up? Can I have the pastors come up here, please? I want to go from visitation to habitation. I want to go from a little bit to a lot of bit. I want to go from just having a, just a touch to a full-blown frontal hug that he doesn't let go. Do you want that, church? If you want that, you're going to need strength to get there. And I want to open up the altars right now if you want strength to get there. That you understand that you can't do it the same way. You understand you, you, you just can't keep doing it the way you've been doing it because it's got, there's got to be more than where you're at. If that's you, come on down. Because I guarantee you God is bigger than any of you have experienced yet. We have just started to touch what's going on. You all know how an iceberg works, right? You see like, you know, you see an iceberg on top, and even if it's 100 yards wide, it can be miles long under the water. Okay? That's the way God is. You've touched him. Yeah, you've touched him. You've touched him on the shoulder. You've touched him on his face. You've touched him on top. Whatever it is, you've touched him. But he's so much deeper, so much wider, so much greater. And he wants you to hold on to him, not touch him. Amen. Amen. Pastors, go forth and start praying. Say, what are we going to pray for? You're going to pray for more.
me talk. Let me talk. Excuse me, Tom. Is it on? Hallelujah. When you get prayer, stay up here because we're going to do something again that we did on Thursday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just move through them quickly, pastors. You're depositing, you're imputing righteousness. That, that's not done with a long prayer. That's just done with a touch. Come on, touch them and say, I impute more into you right now in Jesus' name. Come on, more. You know, I'll tell you while, we're, while they're praying. You know, one of the things that we have to do differently, I read an article just today, and I was talking to uh, Brother Ray. He wants to be coming to San Antonio next month. Uh, he's got some other business in town, and I said, well, whenever you come, let me know. Um, one of the things that we have to do differently in church is we need to confront things quicker instead of letting them keep going. Okay, And why do we have to confront things quicker? Because those things are holding the people back from getting stuff done. Okay, And we need to just start to confront things. So it's literally just let's lay hands and let's say I impute right now in Jesus' name. And that's it. You know, there's people that have con uh, con conversations with demons. I don't need no conversation with a demon. I just need to cast it out. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Let's get the rest of you. Come on up here. Jorge, you guys, Jimmy, come on up. We're going to do something a little different. Let's get you all in a circle like we did Thursday night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, bring them in together. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's squeeze in. Let's love on each other a little bit. Squeeze in. Those of you that are in the middle, you're the logs. Okay? Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, Roman? How long have you known him? About half your life. How old are you? 27. That's actually a long time. Good. Good. Let's see what God's going to do right now. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, pastors, you all surrounding? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's my pastors? Raise your hands, pastors. I want to see where you're at. I got a dead spot right in the center over there. Let's get somebody over there. There's pastor. Okay, we got him. We got him. All right. What do we got? Pastor Mario, bring on over here. I want it evenly spaced. All right, if you're in the center, all you're going to do is receive. Somebody say receive. receive. What are you going to receive? You're going to receive some fire. Some of you received some fire on Thursday, and I got some great testimonies on it, quite honestly. Rick was like, I've never felt that before in my life. Right, Rick? It's like it was just like heat just coming. I just, you know, and nobody laid hands on him. What happened? The fire of God fell, right? Well, you know what? It's going to fall again right now. Okay. It's going to fall again right now. They're going up to the sky. All right. Cool. So it's going to fall again right now. Why is it going to fall again right now? Well, we're not about just making everybody feel good. We are about igniting passion for him. Okay. Because we need passion. Okay. And you say, well, I am passionate. You need more. I need more. Okay? I need more passion. Why? Because I can't do it the way I did it last year and expect to go any deeper. I've got to change. I've got to take charge. Okay? I've got to, uh, what do they say? Own it. I've got to own it. Okay? Will you be willing to own where you are spiritually right now? Okay? Understand that it can't change unless you change. Okay? 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit more fire into your bones, okay? And then what you do with it, it's all up to you, okay? So pastors, just start to pray and start to intercede. Hallelujah. And those of you in the center, you're just receiving right now. You're just receiving. If you're on live stream, you're just receiving right now. Prepare your heart. Just receive. I'm going to tell you what's going on right now. I'm asking the Lord to remove. If you've ever done barbecue before, you've got to clean out the ashes before you start the new fire. And I'm asking God right now that he would remove the ashes, remove the fire, the old flames, okay? Because you need some new logs on your fire, okay? You need some new passion on your fire. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, pastors, I hope you did your breath mitts because what I want you to do is just from where you're at, just start blowing onto the fire. Uh, wave your hands, blow with your breath, whatever it is, and I'm going to pray. Yeah. Father, I call down your fire right now in the name of Jesus that you would pull it upon your people that there would be an increase of passion for you. I pray, Father, this would not be an emotional thing, but it would be something greater. It would be kingdom in all things, Lord. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, would you pour out the lighter fluid, God? Would you pour out the oil, God? Would you pour out all the, all the things that start up fire, Lord, in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, Father. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just feel it going down your head. Just feel the oil pouring down your head right now. Hallelujah. You know, there's sometimes where I'm having conversations and I feel the drops of the oil hitting the top of my head. I know what I'm saying. Just feel the oil. Allow the Lord to let you feel the oil being poured out on you. Let it soak in. Let it soak in. Let it soak in. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we come before you, Lord, and we ask. We ask that the pastors would be the torch bearers, Lord. And as they go around touching the outside of this log, that it would ignite, Father. We ask for your holy fire, God. Let your holy fire fall right now in Jesus' name. Pastors, go touch them. Hallelujah. Go touch them. Let the fire spread. Church, if you're a log right now, you need to think about fires that you've seen in the past. How you, you start a fire in one particular spot. And it starts to spread from there. Just see it spreading right now by faith. Father, I call down the fire of heaven right now. I call down the fire of heaven, Lord. No strange fire, no wildfire. I call down the fire straight from your altar, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, let your fire fall upon this place. Let us be ignited with passion for you, Lord. Let us be ignited with more of you, God. Let us not go back to what we knew, but let it be a whole new journey, Father. Let us go from mountaintop to mountaintop, Father. Let the fire of God flow from our hands and our mouths, God. Let the fire of God be contagious that we would draw our unsaved family and even strangers to our church, Lord. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the spirit of evangelism would break out, Lord. That the spirit of evangelism would break out, Father. That we would go forth in power, Lord. Go forth in power, God. Go forth in power, Lord. That we would speak to strangers and we would heal the sick. We would cleanse the lepers. We would cast out demons because you've given it to us, God. We're a royal priesthood. We're a peculiar people. We give it to you, Father. We give it to you, Father. 
We give ourselves to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh Lord. Father, I release dreams, visions. But most of all, Lord, I release the strength to follow you. Where you go, we go. Where you go, we go, Lord. And we understand that it's not always the easy path. But we submit to your wisdom. We submit to your authority. For we will worship you not only as our Savior, but as our Lord and Savior. Father, we're, we're being real right now. We want to have the full blessing, not part of it. The full blessing, Lord. The full blessing, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since you're all so close together, would you just turn around and love on somebody right now? I was waiting for something. Watch your head, watch your head. And it's blessed. Silence is a blessing. Come here. Mm. Where are you going to school? Mm hmm. Baby, is that what is? Medea, right? Pray for her. Hallelujah. Huh? Yeah. Hold that baby up. Everybody extend your hands toward that baby. That baby doesn't cry unless there's something wrong. Father, we just, we just speak healing, peace, joy in the name of Jesus. 
for you're the great physician, Lord. We pray, Father, that you would bless this child, that you would strengthen this child, that you would protect this child. And above all things, Lord, that you would be with this child. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right. Well, I've got two hours before I got to be in class. So, would you stand up? Let me bless you. We have class today, right? Who wants one more blessing before you get out of here? I want one more. Why not? Father, I just speak blessings right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that what you would do would be bless us with fullness in everything we do. I ask, Father, that you bless our health, our wealth, our homes. I ask, Father, that you bless us at work. You bless us even at play, Lord. Just bless us, Lord, that we would know that we're blessed because your presence is being carried with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.